Hello everyone. In our last test video of the X100 Edge Peak self-driving power bank, we measured all sorts of impressive data. If you haven't seen that video yet, you can check it out on my homepage for a detailed review of this power bank. It has a maximum simultaneous discharge power of 466 watts, and that's not just a gimmick. With such a powerful power bank, I'm sure you're curious to see its internal circuit structure and the battery cells used inside. For those who enjoy my videos, please give a thumbs up, follow and support. In this video, we're going to disassemble this Edge Peak X100 Supermobile power bank. Without further ado, let's get started with the teardown. Looking at the structure of this Edge Peak X100 power bank, there are four screws on the top and four on the side, so it should be possible to disassemble it without damage. Let's first remove the screws. Here are the eight screws we've taken out. Now, let's take off the side cover, which is made of aluminum alloy. The button has this kind of structure. Take a look. Now, let's remove the cover on the other side, which is the DC port. There's a wiring harness here, and it's all filled with glue. This is the function button of the power bank, and it has a waterproof rubber ring for protection. Let's pop out the main board from inside. This is a thick, transparent plastic cover, and here's the internal module. After removing the four screws on the main board, we can separate the battery from the casing. It has a push-in design, which is really nice. This is the bottom of its aluminum alloy shell, which helps with the heat dissipation of the power bank. Inside, there are six battery cells, and this wiring harness is for collecting the voltage from the cells. Let's take that off. On both sides are the positive and negative terminals of the power bank. The main board and the battery have now been separated. While disassembling, I accidentally short-circuited and burned one of the pins of this button. This is the frame that holds the display, and it's also made of aluminum alloy. Underneath the display, there's a white plastic frame. Supports it. The display's wiring harness is also covered in glue. This part is the full color display of the power bank, and this is what the inside looks like. The entire board design is very compact, and the PCB of the main board is quite thick, using a craftsmanship that was common in the past. This edge zone area of the X100 Super Power Bank can indeed achieve a lossless teardown. The entire mainboard PCB craftsmanship is top-notch, featuring advanced multi-layer PCB technology with gold plating. The device has a main control MSU that manages all the functions of the power bank, along with an advanced battery protection chip that oversees the input and output current of six series lithium batteries and the DC port. Here's one chip and here's another. Two fully integrated protocol chips control the input and output current of the two USB-C ports. Now, I'm going to introduce the circuit situation and the components used from the battery end to the output end. This power bank uses high capacity 21700 battery cells connected in series, sourced from Samsung SDI, a company established in 19 1970 with rich experience and strong technical strength in the lithium battery field. The model of this battery cell is INR21750S with a capacity of 5000 mAh. 
This is currently the most powerful model among Samsung's 21700 cells. According to official data, the maximum discharge current of this cell is 25A, but it can reach up to 45A under optimal conditions. So, what do you think, folks? Is this cell good? The six cells are spot welded together using nickel strips and wrapped in two layers of transparent heat shrink film for protection. The sides are insulated with two layers of insulating film. This part of the circuit and this part of the circuit make up the battery protection circuit of the power bank. It consists of a protection chip, current limiting resistors, NTC thermistors, protection switches, and other components. The model of this lithium battery protection chip is BQ40Z80 from Texas Instruments, a multinational company founded in 1930 that specializes in innovative digital signal processing and analog circuit research, manufacturing, and sales. This is a fully integrated single chip solution for battery management and protection functions. Equipped with Texas Instruments patented technology for detecting the usable capacity, voltage, current, temperature, and other parameters of two to six series connected battery packs. It supports Turbo Mode 2.0, an Intel dynamic power technology, providing the system with the maximum usable power. The maximum current has eight multifunction pins that can be configured for thermal input, ADC input, general input, output, LED functions, and so on, featuring various programmable protection functions. This X100 has a unique DC input and output, equipped with a powerful protection chip that works with the main control MSU to manage it. It supports a DC input power of up to 240 watts and an output power of up to 315 watts, which we tested in a previous video. If you haven't seen the test video, you can check it out on my homepage. A Cine self-resetting surface mount fuse is used for overcurrent protection at the DC port. This part of the circuit is for the lithium battery balancing circuit, which balances the voltage of six series connected battery cells, extending the lifespan of the cells and improving circuit safety. This is the voltage collection line for the six individual battery cells. Here's an interface for connecting the voltage collection line of the individual battery cells. On the back of the protection chip, there are two battery protection MOSFET switches. Model Cine P035N85GU from Wuxi Xinjilin Semiconductor, a company established in 2013 that focuses on MOSFETs, IGBTs, and other semiconductor chips and power devices. These are two NMOS switches that provide efficient high-frequency switching performance, rated at 85V with an internal resistance of 3 milliohms. Here's one, and here's the other. There are two 3000 ohm current limiting resistors to prevent excessive current during charging or discharging, thus protecting the battery and circuit from damage. The two surface mount fuses are superior to the over current protection of a power bank. These are two NTC thermal resistors for the power bank. This part of the circuit is the power supply circuit for the main control MCU of the power bank, designed with an independent buck converter. This hexagonal chip is a buck controller chip, model 4302, with the actual model being TPS 54302, similar to the Li Bao chip from Texas Instruments in the USA. This is a synchronous buck converter chip with an input voltage range of 4.5 to 28V and a current rating of 3A, integrating two MOSFETs and featuring internal loop compensation and a 5 millisecond soft start function to reduce the number of components. It works with a 4 in 110 microhenry inductor to form a buck circuit using resistors to lower the battery voltage to the level required by the MSU output. The main control MSU chip of the power bank is model AT32F413KCU704 from Chongqing Yateli Technology, a company established in 2016 that is dedicated to promoting innovation trends in 32-bit microcontrollers in the global market. This is a high-performance microcontroller equipped with a 32 2-bit arm. M4 core, utilizing advanced processes to effectively enhance overall performance, achieving a computation speed of 200 nanometer hertz with a built-in single precision floating point unit, FPU, and digital signal processor. The DSP, paired with a variety of peripherals and a flexible clock control mechanism, can meet the needs of applications in multiple fields. This MCU supports 26 KDB of flash and 64 KB of SRAM, with excellent performance in zero-weight execution that surpasses the level of similar chips in the industry. For more more detailed information, interested friends can check out the official website of Yateli in Chongqing. This part is a full color display controlled by the MCU with the manufacturer's private imprint information on the back. Here, an LED light bead is used for the illumination of the power bank, controlled by the main control MCU, which manages two MOSFETs to create various lighting effects. The private model of the MOSFET is 0103Y. There's also an environmental light sensing chip here for automatic control of the LED lighting brightness based on ambient light. 
This part of the circuit is a Type-C buck boost control circuit, responsible for managing the current input and output for a high power of 140 watts. The Type-C Eco buck boost control circuit uses chip-mounted ceramic MLCC capacitors for filtering, with two additional solid-state capacitors for further filtering. These two solid-state capacitors come from Dongguan Konisheng Electronics, a company established in 2005 that focuses on capacitor research, production, and providing comprehensive capacitor application solutions. All the solid-state capacitors on this mainboard are from Konisheng, Sheng, and they are all rated at 100 microfarads with a voltage tolerance of 35V. Based on this specification, they should be from Kony Sheng's AM series, although there is no downloadable information on this series on their official website. The current sampling resistor for the Type-C Eco buck boost control circuit at the battery end uses a chip resistor rated at R005. The buck boost control rod for the Type-C Eco circuit is made of alloy and has a logo printed on it. The synchronous buck boost NMOS switch in the Type-C Eco control circuit consists of four NMOS transistors arranged in a full bridge topology to achieve efficient bidirectional power flow for input and output. All four NMOS transistors are of the model P4V45GU, just like the battery protection switch, and come from Wuxi Xin Jilun Semiconductor, rated for a voltage of four times with an internal resistance of six milliums. The NMOS transistors are all from Xin Jilun's D-Class group. The buck boost control chip for the Type-C circuit is the IP2366 from Shenzhen Emergency New Technology, a company established in 2014 that specializes in the research and sales of power management chips and fast charging protocol chips. This is a lithium ion charge and discharge management chip that integrates multiple mainstream input and output fast charging protocols with a maximum charge and discharge power of 140 watts. The chip includes an IC temperature sensor, battery NTC temperature, and input voltage control detection loop, which can intelligently adjust the charging current based on the detected charger power, supporting low power consumption mode with a built-in 14-bit ADC. Precise measurement. Input voltages and currents have safety features. The buck boost uses MLCC capacitors for filtering. The resistor is R005. VBUS uses a 40V PMOS switch. Filtering uses MLCC capacitors, controlling 65W output. Battery input filtering uses MRCD capacitors. The inductor is 22 microhenry. The XPM52C buck controller supports charging protocols. According to the specifications, it should be a PMOS switch rated for 40V, but I couldn't find the manufacturer's details. The output filtering for the Type-C single port uses two MLCC capacitors, one here and one there, along with a surface-mounted solid-state capacitor for filtering. This part of the circuit is responsible for the output current control of the Type-C dual-port buck control circuit, which supports 65W output. For the battery side of the Type-C dual-port buck control circuit, the current input filtering uses chip-mounted stacked ceramic MRCD capacitors, along with a surface mounted solid state capacitor for filtering. The buck inductor for the Type-C dual port buck control circuit is marked with 220, indicating it's a 22 microhenry alloy inductor. The buck controller chip for the Type-C dual port buck control circuit is the XPM52C from Shenzhen Fumanwei Electronics, a comprehensive integrated circuit solution provider established in 2001. This chip supports various fast charging protocols and integrates a synchronous buck converter. It contains two buck MOS switch transistors and supports a maximum input voltage of 31 V and a maximum output power of 65W. The chip features CCCV loop control and line loss compensation, and its peripheral design is streamlined to provide a complete solution for adapters. The output filtering on the other end of the Type-C dual port buck circuit. The capacitor is like a stacked ceramic MLCC capacitor combined with a solid state capacitor for filtering. The Type-C output has a V8 switch placed in the middle of the mainboard. It uses an NMOS switch with a private label model 3065Q which also comes from Wuxi Xinjialan Semiconductor, and it's a low-class switch with a voltage rating of 30 volts and an internal resistance of 4.2 milliohms. The Type-C output filtering uses two MLCC capacitors. These are the two Type-C connectors of the power bank, which are protected by a plastic sheath and reinforced with steel plates. Both internal contact plates are black, and the workmanship details are quite good. This is the DC connection port of the power bank where the positive and negative metal contacts are made of gold-plated material. The XT30 interface is also well made. The bottom shell of the power bank is designed with aluminum alloy. This edge seam area is labeled X100 Super Mobile Power. Disassembling it like this, the material cost shouldn't be cheap, which explains why this power bank is priced so high. You get what you pay for. This is an eternal truth. The top-tier Samsung 2170 battery cell, the multi-layer structure of the mainboard, the gold plating process, the Texas Instruments chip, 
two Atelier Technology MSU Shinjielin Series DNA MOSFETs, plus the aluminum alloy shell and the programmer's manual design, all contribute to the price. So what do you think, loyal fans? Is it worth it? For those who enjoy my videos, please like, follow and support with a tip. Your support is my motivation for updating this channel. Thank you all for watching and see you in the next video.